Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before we go any further and you realise how fucking bad this content is. If this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, you absolute fucking raccoon you. You absolutely love garbage. But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. For today's deck profile, we are looking at Zoo Tri Brigade. There are fans on both sides of these archetypes that aren't a particular fan of this kind of deck. I, however, really enjoy playing with it, so I don't give a fuck. And if you're out there watching this, I assume you don't give a fuck either. Yes, today's deck profile, we are taking one of the old cult classics and slapping it together with one of the modern ones. Yes, Zoo and Tri Brigade go together like Donald and Kim. What's not to love about that? In today's video, I'll be demonstrating the particular build that I've been testing online and having a lot of fun with. It's almost certainly not going to be perfect because I'm a fucking yu gi tuber and I don't really know what I'm doing, but at least I can pretend, right? If you're watching this video and you're inspired to pick up any of the cards, definitely check out Jam Jam Cards UK. There is a link in the description for a nice exclusive discount, courtesy of yours truly. They don't just do Yu-Gi-Oh singles either, they do Pokemon as well. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck into the deck profile. Let me first apologise in advance if there's any weird noises in the background. It is windy as all fuck out of there. And of course the horses next door are going absolutely insane as a result. On top of that it's been stoned a little bit which also sends them round the twist as well. To make matters worse I have the loudest laptop in the world. Mostly because it's super powerful but as a result the fans go like the clappers. And sometimes it gets picked up in the background of the video. I'll do my best to edit all of that out. But that is enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. So for our Tri Brigade cards I think this is a pretty self-explanatory lineup here. Of course, in Blazing Vortex, which is due out tomorrow at the time of recording, we get Kit, which is really important. If you want to check out a combo that goes on with these here, uh, that's really, really cool. Check out my How to Play video for this. I'll probably pop a link onto the screen so you can go ahead and check that out if you're interested. But again, I think this lineup is quite nice and tight. Others may disagree. Certainly let me know if you do. So we have triple copies of Fractal, a single copy of Keras, two copies of Naval, and a single copy of Kit. And for our zoo package, we have triple copies of Whiptail, two copies of Thoroughblade, triple copies of Ram Ram, and a single copy of Rapier. Again, I think that the build so far is pretty standard as far as most of these decks would go. We're running a much smaller hand trap lineup in this particular build, mostly because hand traps aren't quite as effective at the moment in the current game. And as such, we're running a smaller package in favour of going for more of a control aspect from the rest of the deck. We are, however, running triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring. I think pretty much mandatory in almost every single format. Really good against rogue builds and stuff like that. It usually just shuts them down. And even the best decks, it hits in at least some capacity, even if it's not absolutely insane. Much like every other format, triple copies of Ash Blossom, more or less mandatory in almost every single deck. Running triple copies of Triple Tactics Talent. I fucking hate saying that. This card, of course, punishes your opponent if they try to interrupt you in some capacity. Still a really, really strong option to go with. You could play something like Forbidden Droplet if you wanted something a bit more proactive instead. But in triple copies of Tenki here, I think this is pretty much mandatory in any of these kind of builds. Uh, it, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure I really don't need to go into detail here. Running two copies of Pot of Avarice, this deck does churn through its monsters very, very quickly. And in order to be able to play the grind game, this really gives you the option to do that. If Zoo was at full power, of course, we wouldn't have this issue with consistency and being able to grind out in the long game. But Pot of Avarice does allow you to do that. The downside is it's not the strongest card, especially if you open it. So we are running just the two copies here instead. We're in a weird position in the game at the moment where back row is becoming more and more heavy. People favouring to choose back row over hand traps instead because the hand traps don't frankly do enough in the current game. This particular format is built to deal with hand traps with no problem at all and as such people are opting for more back row heavy options and Harpy's Feather Duster just gives us an option to help deal with those back row heavy decks. If you really wanted to you could play additional back row removal although that is probably something I would play in the side because it's not always needed. We're running a single copy of Foolish Burial, pretty self-explanatory, I'm sure I don't need to go into details there. And much the same for Zodiac Barrage, of course if this was at more than one we would absolutely play more copies. Running a single copy of Call by the Grave for when you do get hit by that hand trap or of course the fact that you can use this as a bit of an offensive play against your opponent. The fact that it's a quick play spell, you already know how fucking good this card is. Again, I really don't need to go into detail here. You know this is solid. If it was at more than one, we'd probably find the space for more than one copy. 
We're running triple copies of Infinite and Permanent. It's really solid going first or second. What's not to like about that? The fact that it also switches off the opponent's back row is really nice in a format in which people are playing much more back row than usual. We're running two copies of Ice Dragon's Prison here. This is really strong against all the top meta decks. You could get rid of this if you wanted to play something different, but I think that being able to play this if you've got access to it is something you should definitely be trying out. Tri Brigade Revolt is one of the few Tri Brigade cards that, you know, in terms of spells and traps, I think is really worth playing. Uh, and as such, we've just got the one copy in here. I really don't think any more than this is necessary. And then we round off the main deck with triple copies of Solemn Strike. Again, really strong at the moment. A really, really important card being a counter trap as well. The fact that people can't respond to it quite as much is really, really nice. The life points, of course, don't matter. And it can switch off your opponent's ability to play quite easily. We all know the Solemn cards, they can absolutely just end an opponent's turn. And at the moment, Solemn Strike is a really good option to consider. We then move on to arguably the most generic extra deck in the world. But before we do, just a quick note here. We don't run a side deck here, mostly because it depends on the format that you're playing in. If you play this in a few weeks from now, things could have changed dramatically for all we know. And of course, it depends what you're playing against in terms of what tournaments you're playing in, all that good stuff. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that, though. There are plenty of videos out there discussing what the best side deck options are for the current format. The ratios here for me are absolutely spot on. I've not really felt the need to switch this up too much. Tri Brigade Rugal, just two copies of that. Two copies of Shreg and two copies of Ferret. I think honestly two of each works absolutely fine. Again, you could run more if you really wanted to, but given that this is a hybrid build, we really need all that extra deck space that we can make as much use of as possible. We then move on to our Zodiac extra deck cards. We've got two copies of Chaka 9. I think two is fine. Two copies of Tiger Mortar. Some may prefer a third. I think the two is absolutely fine. Traditionally, we'd only really play the one Borbo, but with the inclusion of Zeus in the deck, being able to attack directly to quite easily set it up is a really nice option to look at. Just a single copy of Hammer Kong, more than this again is just not necessary, and a single copy of Dryden because it's at one. And then our final option here is AA Zeus. Pretty self-explanatory here, this card's absolutely bonkers, and you need to play it if you can get access to it. And that is all for today's video. By virtue of the fact that you made it this far, hopefully you enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe and the notification bell, or hated it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. In either case, thank you very much for making it this far into the video, and hopefully you have enjoyed the content. Deck profiles aren't all we do on this channel, but unfortunately the well is a little bit dry at the moment, if I'm to be brutally honest with you, and as a result, deck profiles are quite easy to make, quite easy to test, and all of that good stuff. If there is other content you'd like to see on the channel, definitely let me know down in the comments exactly what you'd like to see. I do take the time to read as many of them as I possibly can. Again, thank you very much for coming along. I do really appreciate you being here, and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.